this is a good point uh, to pivot uh, to Cory Booker. Uh, now that we're talking about sort of you know what flies with Wall, Wall Street when you're the uh, opposite kind of Democrat. Exactly. I mean, um, I mean because I think you know we could have a Democrat more progressive from Kentucky than we do from New Jersey. Well, I you know I don't know if you know that's that's an interesting. That's an interesting thing to parse out, actually, in some respects. I mean, progressive in the sense, yes, I guess. I mean, when you're talking about economics in many respects, I think so. I mean, you know, uh, Cory Booker has, is one of those guys who has uh, really managed his brand very, very well through the years. Um, you know, uh, he is well known for literally running into uh, burning buildings and saving people. Uh, Michael in the office made a good point the other day, though, that his buddy said, you know, Cory Booker wouldn't have to run in to burning buildings to save people if he had. They can afford been, firefighters there. If if he hadn't been in favor of cutting first responders, you know. So that's um, a great, uh, great point by Michael. Uh, yes, and and uh, beyond that, there are other issues with Booker that you know we we are we're well familiar with. People forget this, but. Corporate ad reform, uh, he's part of that whole gig. Yep. Um, he, he is part of uh, uh, the, you know, I mean, obviously everybody remembers when he talked about how great Bain Capital was. Yeah, uh, let me, let me just remind it, people, because you know, I don't know Obama if people even, remember this. I don't know if people remember that when um, President Obama, in his reelection campaign, started attacking Bain Capital, which was a no-brainer. We had already seen... Um, uh, Newt Gingrich just tear Romney apart with Bain Capital. It would have been political malpractice not to pick, continue on with that attack. Uh, Cory Booker, I think he was on uh, Meet the Press or whatever it was, and this is what he had to say. I have to just say, from a very personal level, I'm not about to sit here and indict private equity, Booker said. To me, it's just we're getting to a ridiculous point in America especially that I know I live in a state where pension funds, unions, and other people are investing in companies like Bain Capital. If you look at the totality of Bain Capital's record, they've done a lot to support businesses, to grow businesses. And to me, and I'm very uncomfortable with this, uh, the last point I'll make is this kind of stuff is nauseating to me on both sides. It's nauseating to the American public. Enough is enough. Stop attacking private equity. Stop attacking Jeremiah Wright. Where is the equivalent? Right, he was equating he was equating the two of them: with the right attacking Jeremiah Wright and the left attacking uh, what Romney did. And and there were so many things wrong with what he said there. It's First fine. of all, whether you believe Obama should have been attacking private equity in totality, he wasn't. He was attacking what Mitt Romney did at Bain. It's a very specific thing. He didn't say no private equity has ever created jobs. I mean, so so this guy was was literally was what what um, Cory Booker was doing was building up a straw man to defend his friend. Yes, because very specifically, what they were doing was saying these are the choices Mitt Romney made at Bain Capital, which was to enrich himself by bankrupting people and throwing people out of their jobs. That so that's the first thing that he completely got incorrect. The second thing is, really, you're going to compare that to Jeremiah Wright. You're going to compare people using racism and using a preacher, um, who you know, who Obama used to go to, who eventually he disavowed for some of the things he said, whether he should have or not. There are a lot of people that say a lot worse. I, I know I study the National Rifle Association. I don't see people on the right disavowing, um, uh, and and you know, you, but you're going to equate that with somebody pointing out that this guy that went in and literally like destroyed people's livelihoods, destroyed whole towns. I mean, again. You know, I may live in a, in a city that actually, in the end, because of a number of big corporations, you know, that have stayed like Procter and Gamble and some other factors. Cincinnati has done pretty well, but you know, you can take a drive throughout the Midwest, and you can see these towns, places like Youngstown and whatever that used to be thriving cities that the Mitt Romneys of the world have freaking destroyed, like Detroit, for example. Um, and that's not a legitimate. You know, talking about what our economics has been and what Mitt Romney chose to do, that's not legitimate? No, of course not. Um, I mean, of course he's being disingenuous, and the bottom line is is that he is bathed in this type of stuff. Um, there's a, there was a story out by the New York Times the other day uh, on Cory Booker talking about, uh, well, let me just quote from it. Uh, Mr. Booker 
Now, now it starts off with uh, Cory Booker going out west and talking to the Silicon Valley types of people. And it goes on to say, Mr. Booker personally has obtained money for a startup called Waywire from influential investors, uh, Google's, including Google's executive. Not big people. You know, Eric Schmidt of Google yep. and, and uh, who else? what were some of the other names? You know, nobody important. Now, uh, a year after its debut, Waywire has already endured a round of layoffs, had just 2,000 visitors in June, <laughs> according to Compete, a web tracking service. The company still says... The majority it's report kicks their ass It's Actually, traffic. that is absolutely true. Yet, in financial disclosures filed Eric last Schmidt, month... Eric Schmidt, invest in the majority report if you want to actually Well, no, wait a second. Now, hold on, now. because we've got to get to this, because this is, this is, this is stunning. Sorry. Um, <laughs> Booker... In financial disclosure files revealed last month, revealed that his stake in the company was worth one to five million dollars. Taken together, right. his other assets are worth no more than seven hundred thirty. The guy has been raising money for this company as mayor. Now, it's perfectly legal. You know what else he did, <laughs> which is important to state too, Sam, is he he's, he's made speeches since he's become mayor and. Started the 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 Cory Booker show first by finding a getting a friend of his to do a documentary on his first run. People forget that was his big PR entree. Yeah, Taking on fight. the system, he was a street new fight. populist young guy who yep. chose to live in the projects in Newark and all yep. that. I mean, you know, this, his his career has been stage managed. This guy, when the rest of us were in college, figuring out how many beers we're going to drink that night, this guy would be planning his route to the presidency. Yeah, um, I mean, it, it, and, it's stunning. And, and, and so he's he's made speeches worth one point. He's gotten paid one point three million since he's been gave half of that to charity. You know what that means? He didn't give the other half to charity. So he's made paid corporate speeches while he's been in public office and and kept six hundred six hundred fifty thousand dollars of that. You know, um, it, in addition it, to what you're saying, I, I mean, I, I'll tell you the, the the real problem with a story like this. And then, of course, he's also um, uh, Waywire has also provided jobs for associates of Mr. Booker, the son of a top campaign supporter, and his social media <laughs> consultant, who is now on his Senate campaign staff. I mean, in other words, what this is, what this the story of Cory Booker is, and we should also say that on top of that. Do you know who else sat on that advisory board of uh, Cory Booker's company? Jeff Zucker's 15-year-old son was on the advisory board because apparently, um, and he has now since resigned after this story came out, his son was um, an advisor as a millennial advisor. Apparently, a YWIRE spokesman said that uh, Andrew Zucker was hired in March after another member of the firm's advisory board told Cole founder Sarah Ross that he had, quote, developed a reputation of being able to identify technologies that would be popular with teenagers and which ones wouldn't be. So in other words, Most, this, you know, 15-year-olds all the time accomplish that kind of I thing. I mean, maybe, but the point is... I mean, I'm, I'm not shocked there. Obviously, he hired this kid for his talent because they could see when he was 12. It was kind of like when... When uh, James Carville uh, started doing that sports radio show with, with Luke Russert, right. it was Luke Russert's knowledge of sports that got it done. Look, the bottom line is, you know, uh, regardless of whether Cory Booker pocketed six hundred grand or $1 million, I mean, it's quite evident that this guy's going to go on to make a lot of money at one point, different points in his career. The bottom line, though, is that this guy is more of that ilk than the ilk that he right, and, but I don't even care how much money he makes. The, 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 he's more of that ilk, but the bigger problem is, is that there are going to be a lot of regulatory issues dealing with the growth of the internet. There have been, there will be. Oh yeah, of course. right. I mean, this um, net this neutrality, things for, like yes. of that nature. So, what's going to happen when when Eric Schmidt, who's in, investing in Cory Booker's company, and Cory Booker needs to stay invested, needs him to stay invested in his company? What happens when he calls him and? And, and needs to talk about net neutrality or something else. What happens when some of these, these corporations where he's given speeches uh, and, and, he's, and he's gotten 20 or 15 or, you know, whatever, 1,000 per speech, you know, say, hey, remember the money we gave you? We need to talk to you about something. What happens then? Yeah, well, I mean, look, the, I, mean, I don't think, I don't even think it's that. I don't even think it's a question of leverage because I think this, you know, when you see uh, Cory Booker's, you know, had uh, Jeff Zucker, uh, who, who runs CNN, we should say, uh, his son on his advisory board, where he's he's in he's taking money from Schmidt. It's not so much that Schmidt has leverage over him now. 
what it is is that these guys are simpatico. There's no way that Cory Booker, it doesn't matter how much money is involved or not. That's, we don't even have to talk about that because they are, uh, we know who Cory Booker is going to listen to on these questions. Right. They're his we, people is what you're saying. Yes, it doesn't really matter exactly. what, what the specifics is, are. They're just his people. Right. You don't, you don't give money. You don't leverage money with this guy. You just give him money because he's one of you. And, and that's the bottom line. He's proven he's one of you. You don't have to leverage it because that's why you give him money in the first place is because he's not the type of guy you have to You're buy. right. You, just, you, you support his career because you kind of know when he gets there exactly. that uh, he's a Trojan horse. Uh, and you kind of know just what he's going to do. Exactly. And it's very smart, frankly, from their perspective. Of course. You know, of you course. support a young and up-and-coming charismatic African-American. And, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, but we, but the, the racial part of it is important here because you know he's going to have a lot of uh, a lot of loyalty from African-American voters. You can bring the money there, and you can, you know, help get him over the top and get him into these offices, and, and you know, it's a good, it's a good sort of uh, well, that, smokescreen also- for, for a lot of what he really stands for. That's also why he brought up uh, Jeremiah Wright. Right. I mean, that's why he raises Jeremiah Wright in an analogy that makes absolutely zero sense. But he brings up Jeremiah Wright because he wants to make it like, you know, attacking private equity is like being racist. I mean, that is the yes. equation that he's trying to draw there. And so, you know, the the um, uh, this is and I'm and maybe in his mind it is, you know, because uh, private equity are are his peeps. And so, you know, it is a real shame this guy's going to win uh, the primary. Uh, I think it's a, the special election is Tuesday. He's going to win. Uh, I would have loved to and see him. He's going to win the general election, and he's going to win the general election. A neoliberal representing New Jersey, which is a state where we could have. You know, I mean, the worst part about it is that he's up against Rush Holt, who's an yep. actual rocket scientist. Yep. Um, like really from Princeton, and brilliant, and you know, progressive on everything. Very good on um, the NS, on the and, uh, wireless surveillance. I mean, good across the board. And this is the guy who should be uh, right. who should be senator from that state. Right. If Cory Booker is the best we could get, you know, I'd say, well, okay, better than than you know having a Republican there. But he's not the best we could get. We could do much better in New Jersey. Um, you know, I mean, essentially, I don't know if he'll be this bad, but it, it, it's almost the equivalent of having Joe Lieberman represent Connecticut. I I doubt. I, I, well, you sit there and say, sure, he's, he's great on gay rights. He isn't a neo. You know, Joe Lieberman led the fight. He, I think he actually, on foreign policy, may be close to neoconish as it is. This is a guy who was endorsed by Jack Kemp the first time he ran for mayor. I mean, this, uh, this, is, th- this guy is a problem, and he's going to get up there. He's going to sing the praises of Christie. And so people should really be conscious of who Cory Booker is. Uh, it's a huge drop off from Frank Lautenberg. I can tell you that right now. And it's, it's yeah. I mean, I found in a lot of these races, you know, over the last, recent years, when it comes to sort of Democrats who've left and Democrats who've taken their place in some of these other states, we've stepped forward, right? Yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, Blumenthal, a huge yeah. step forward, right, from from Lieberman. Yeah. Um, or is it Murphy? Murphy, I'm sorry. Murphy a huge step Lieberman. forward from right. from Joe Lieberman, right? Um, you know, in a lot of these places, you know, we've gotten somebody better than the Democrat who left. You know, I'm, I'm, I don't know why others, I, I thought about this the other day, and a lot of these examples were coming to me at that time. Um, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm going further back now, but, you know, when Jim Jeffords, who caucus with the Democrats, left, who was sort of a marginal Republican, centrist Democrat, when he became a Democrat, we yeah. got Bernie Sanders. You know what I mean? Yeah. We moved in the right direction in a whole lot frankly, of these places. Elizabeth, and sadly, uh, right I mean, now, Elizabeth we're going Warren, exactly the opposite direction. Elizabeth Warren uh, from John Kerry. I mean, you know, Kerry's aspirations. Yeah, there's, a, there's another example. Elizabeth Warren, yep. definitely an economic issue, so much more progressive than John yep. Kerry, who was yep. good in a lot of other stuff, but, you know, was sort of a free trader. He wasn't a complete neoliberal, but certainly wasn't what we would have wanted, right. you know, I mean, but we're not doing that in New Jersey. Now we're, going, we're losing an old-style liberal lion in Lautenberg, and we're getting one of these newfangled neoliberals in, in Cory Booker. And again, I don't know if he's as bad as Joe Lieberman in foreign policy, but 
he, you know, on uh, social issues, he'll he'll be great, just the way Joe Lieberman was. But I promise you, he'll be that guy like Lieberman was, who was holding up the public option or Medicare for for fifty five and above. That's the kind of role Cory Booker could be playing. I, I think you're right about that. <laughs> <laughs>